Hello and welcome back to the Boxing Index podcast in association with theboxingindex.co.uk. Before I get into today's episode properly, I just wanted to begin by saying that according to the YouTube analytics on my site, the 98% of the views that I got on the last podcast came from people who aren't subscribed. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe. And while I'm plugging stuff, go give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter at Boxing Index. Um, so now that I've bored you with that, in today's episode, we're going to be discussing a fantasy matchroom fight camp card. As you'll probably know by now, <coughs> Eddie Hearn has announced that Matchroom are aiming to return to boxing in July with their fight camp idea in the back garden of Matchroom HQ. Obviously, there are a few stipulations due to the coronavirus in that it will have to be domestic clashes um, because of travel restrictions and it will have to be fights between Matchroom promoted fighters or at least fighters not, promo- not tied to other promotional outfits. Um, I guess that could potentially happen at some point in terms of cross-promotional fights, but um, for the purposes of this podcast, I've taken those stipulations into account when making my fight card. And I've also added one stipulation of my own in that I can only have one fight per weight class just to make it a bit more interesting and not just have a full card of heavyweights or something like that. Um, And of course, according to the British Board of Boxing Control, each behind closed doors show can only have five fights per card, so in accordance with that, I've made a five-fight card. Right, so I'll get straight into it. Coming in at number five in what will be the first fight of the night, I've gone for the rematch between Fowler and Fitzgerald. Obviously, this is quite unrealistic because Fitzgerald most likely won't be ready to fight in July because of his various personal issues, Um, but this is a fantasy fight card, so bear with me. Um, It was obviously a great fight first time around and uh, a bit of a surprise for most people, I'd say. I don't think... Fitzgerald was the favourite going in um, because obviously Fowler had the amateur pedigree and he he probably looked a bit better in the pros as well. Um, I think a lot more people had heard of Fowler. He'd had a lot more noise around his career coming up than Fitzgerald had as well. Um, But I think this could really add a bit of spice to the card, get it started with a bang because obviously they've got quite a a fierce rivalry. Um, There's obviously a lot of public interest in the fight. They've been arguing over social media recently and I've I've noticed that whenever they do argue, the fans seem to get involved. They're really invested in both these two fighters. Um, so I think it could be a good one in terms of bringing eyes to the uh, the fight camp. Um, I actually recently got the chance to interview Anthony Fowler, and he did admit that he was a bit arrogant and complacent going into the first fight, um, and that he thought he'd walk through him, basically. So I, I expect we'd see a different version of Fowler in the second fight, a more focused version. He's obviously got a new trainer in Shane McGuigan, Shane McGuigan um, and he seems to just have a new humbleness about him almost. Um, so I think we'd see someone a lot more focused on getting the job done rather than focused on beating the man Fitzgerald. Um, I'm not sure if that would change the outcome necessarily. It seems a pretty, pretty evenly matched fight, um, but it's definitely something that I'd want to see again, which is why it's taken the fifth spot on my fantasy matchroom fight camp card coming in at number four would be Callum Johnson versus Joshua Boazzi um, the other day on Matchroom's lockdown tapes Callum Johnson actually described this clash as inevitable and uh, I guess in some ways he's right because they're both in the top three light heavyweights in Britain alongside Anthony Yard um, but they actually share the same promoter which makes it easier to make obviously um, I've said this in I think all of my podcasts now but this is one of my favourite divisions and I think it's just waiting to burst to life and I think Johnson versus Boazzi is a fight that would definitely help that. Um, I'm not convinced that it's particularly the right fight for Callum Johnson um, because if he wins the European title you'd expect he'd be in line for a world title shot next um, and if he loses to Boazzi obviously that goes out the window well, maybe not that out the window but it becomes less likely and he'll have to do some rebuilding which at his age he probably doesn't want to be having to do in his career. Um, I think it's a good step up fight for Boazzi um, and I mentioned in a previous podcast I rate him really highly I think he could be one of the next leading lights of British boxing and uh, I think he would actually win this fight um, if he doesn't it can be chalked down to inexperience so he's got less to lose than Callum Johnson he he hasn't got too much career to rebuild because he's he's only just really got going anyway um, they've both got great power so it could potentially be a knockout um, Obviously, you, want, you don't want all of the uh, the fights on the card to go the distance. You do want to see some knockouts. Because, um, obviously, Johnson, he's shown his power being the only man to knock down Paterbiev. And uh, Buatsi's blasted through most of his opponents up to this point. Um, the only thing is, Buatsi hasn't been particularly tested yet. So it would be a good gauge of his level. Whereas uh, 
Um, Callum Johnson's obviously a lot more experienced, so he definitely won't be a pushover. And he's got a great trainer in Joe Gallagher. He's fought at a really high level. He's obviously fought for the IBF world title. Um, but for me, I'd still tip Buatzi. Um So yeah, that comes in at number four on my fantasy fight card. Coming in at number three is Kelbrook versus Amir Khan. Um, I know a few people may not be happy with this. It's a bit of a controversial choice because at this point it just looks like it's just never going to happen. And it feels like we've been talking about it for years, which, well, it didn't feel like that. We have been talking about it for years. Um, and I think people are a bit fed up about talking about it, um, especially the actual fighters, Amir Khan and, and definitely Cal Brook. I know he's said that a few times. Um, <clears throat> and both of them are obviously a bit past it, past it so it'll be nowhere near the contest that it could have been. Um, but I still want to see it, and that's probably because I've just waited so long for it that it just feels like something that I have to see. I still love seeing both of them fight. It was great to see Kelbrook back fighting against DeLuca the other night. I thought he looked good. Um, and I was even excited about um, Terence Crawford, Amir Khan, even if it didn't end well in, in Khan's um, case. Uh, but both, I think the reason that I'm drawn to both of them so much because both of them have one of my favourite performances by Brits Abroad with uh, Kelbrook against Sean Porter and Amir Khan versus Maidana. Um, and I think it just could have been an unbelievable fight if, it, if they'd met in their prime. But I think it would still generate huge interest now. I think Kel Brook would have the slight edge at this stage. He just looks the more motivated. He looks like he still needs boxing. And I think he even made a few realisations before the DeLuca fight, um, which he actually spoke about with BBC Radio 5 Live, saying, I'm not that young buck anymore, so I've got to look after myself. I've got to go to bed at night. I've got to get up. I'm not cutting corners. I'm doing it to the book. I'm doing it properly, and when I've been doing it properly, I'm really sharp. I don't know why I didn't do it before. Obviously, because I was young, thinking I can do it all world champion. But the pennies dropped. I've seen the light now. And he even went on to say, I shouldn't even have a loss on my record if I lived the life. And I think that even could be potentially true, because in my opinion, he's one of the most naturally talented boxers we've ever produced in the UK, especially in terms of his timing. And I think that's the same for Amir Khan in terms of his world-famous speed which is what would have made this fight so great if it happened in their prime. And I think it does still make the fight worth watching. These are two of the best boxers we've ever produced. And even though it would have been nice to see them in their prime, it doesn't mean it's not worth seeing now. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I think Brooke just he just seems the more motivated one. I'm not completely convinced in terms of Amir Khan. He, sort of, he lost to Crawford in a bit of a strange way, claiming low blows that didn't seem like they were necessarily low blows. Um, and I think at the at this point, the only fight that could really motivate Khan and get him up for for um, getting in the ring is a Pacquiao or a Mayweather fight. Um, he spent so long chasing both of them, which is, and I guess there's no shame in chasing the two best fighters of your era, but um, I think those are the kind of fights which would be the only ones that could get him really motivated to get back in the ring. Um, all in all, I think Brooke would be more up for it, which would get him the win. Um, but it's difficult to say because both of them are kind of unknown entities in terms of how they performed over the last few years. Um, but yeah, that comes in at number three on my on my fight camp. Coming in at number two on my card and what in what would be the chief support is an all-British world title unification fight between Callum Smith and Billy Joe Saunders. Uh, like, um, as I mentioned before, the Kelbrook and Amir Khan, Billy Joe has been involved in one of my all-time favourite performances by a Brit abroad when he beat David Lemieux. Um, in terms of his style, he's one of my favourite boxers out there. That doesn't mean I'm necessarily condoning some of the stuff he's done or said outside of the ring, um, but I'll keep my opinions to myself in that regard as I'm here to talk about boxing. Um, but yeah, his boxing talent is absolutely undeniable, um, although he does seem to only sort of rise to the occasion of, of fights that really get him up for it. Um, and he's not great at taking those tick over fights like the one against um, Cotheres last fight um, he obviously got the knockout but he didn't look good before that but I think this is definitely a fight that he'd managed to get up for could be a huge occasion if it's held at Anfield or a similarly suitable venue to mark the potential magnitude of this fight um, and like most of these fights that I'm speaking about on this on this fight card it's probably too big for behind closed doors but this is a fantasy fight card so who cares um, Billy's also got a great trainer in his corner in Ben Davison, one of my favourites in terms of how he seems to seems to really notice like the, the nuances and the details of the sport. Um, and some of his insight when doing punditry is second to none, and he just seems extremely knowledgeable. Um, but Callan Smith's also got a great trainer in his corner with um, Joe Gallagher. 
and he Smith was looking unstoppable, knocking everyone out before the before the rider fight. Um, and I think his size and reach inevitably causes problems for anyone in the division because I think he's like six foot three or six foot four. Um, and I think it could be a tricky style matchup for Saunders as he likes to box on the outside and maintain the distance. Um, so it'll be difficult to get shots off against Smith because of his much smaller reach. Um, and also if he's caught going in or on the way out, Smith's power can be devastating as we've seen. Um, but even though the stats on paper favour Smith, I'd st- I think I'd still be backing Saunders in this fight just because how talented a boxer he is. Um, whereas Smith seems a bit more regimented and drilled. And I could just really see Saunders stepping up to the occasion on this, on this, this uh, for this fight as he has in the past. Um, and just finding a way to win alongside Ben Davison, who I'm sure would come up with a great um, fight plan to negate Smith's obvious advantages. Um, and I think John Ryder almost provided a blueprint for how that can be done anyway. So yeah, that comes in at number two, chief support of the Matchroom Fight Camp Fantasy card. Coming in at number one and headlining the show, for me would be Dillian White versus Anthony Joshua, the rematch. Um, it's not necessarily the number one British heavyweight clash that people want to see, but I think it'd be an absolute cracker nonetheless. Um, Joshua obviously took the first fight, in the pros at least, and uh, being the world champion, you'd expect him to come in as the favourite, but you can never write off Dillian White. Um, he caught AJ a few times in the first fight before being knocked out, and he's come on a lot since then, but I guess so has Joshua. Um, it will be interesting to see... Uh, Joshua back in the ring again because obviously he hasn't knocked anyone out since 2018 he was understandably a bit tentative in the second fight against Ruiz in terms of whether he wanted to engage Um, but it'll be interesting to see whether that was just a tactic for Ruiz or whether that's something that he's permanently changed in his style of fighting and that he's added to his game now Um, so yeah it'll be interesting to see how he approaches a second white fight knowing that his chin is maybe a bit more vulnerable than he realised before um, and I think the Pulev clash will go some way to shedding light on that in terms of how he Joshua is going to move forward. Um, <clears throat> I think no one can deny that Dillian White deserves a world title shot, so this would solve that issue, um, as well as just being a highly requested rematch. Because I think it's it's one of the great current British rivalries, um, go like go all the way back to the amateur days, um, and it's based on real rivalry. It's not just because they're both at the top. And I think White's beat as many guys in the top ten as anyone else in the top ten. Just to put it into context, Dominic Brazil has had two title shots and Charles Martin has been a heavyweight world champion and Dillian White hasn't even had one chance yet. Um, and I think he could probably beat both of those guys fighting them back to back on the same night. So yeah, it would definitely be a, a well-deserved world title shot for Dillian White. Um, but it's also a rematch that the British public have been crying out for for a while. And uh, they're both with the same promotional company, so there's no reason why it can't be made. And I think if these guys end up fighting a couple more times, I can see this going down as one of the great British rivalries when they retire alongside the likes of Ben Eubank, Frotch Groves and others like that. Um, So yeah, that's why I've chosen it to headline my Matchroom Fantasy Fight Camp card. And just to finish, I've got a few um, fights that I've noted down that sort of just missed out on the the card that I thought I'd um, go into a little bit. Uh, The first one, it's in no particular order, is um, Josh Warrington versus Kid Galahad 2. Um, it's, it's undeniable that it's a clash between two world-class British fighters, um, but I think the reason that it didn't make the fight card is because the fight, the first fight wasn't exactly a classic. Um, their styles didn't seem to mix that well, um, but there's no reason to say that a second fight couldn't be better. Warring- Josh Warrington's like most of the time involved in exciting fights with because he's got that relentless pace and high punch output. Um, and yeah, just on a quick side note, I think the fight that's being discussed with him and Zhu can would be an absolute great fight. I imagine the punch output on that would be unbelievable. Um, one for the people who like the stats. Um, but yeah, getting back to the fight, uh, I think Kid Galahad looked great against Claudio Marrero, um, and he probably deserves the rematch after how close the first fight was. Um, but I doubt it's a fight that Warrington really wants because there's not a lot of money in it, and I think he wants to head off to America for unification fights or or have them in Leeds. Um, but yeah, that one just missed out. And... Uh, Another one that just missed out for me was Richard Riakpour against Lawrence Akoli. Um, another great British clash. Um, <clears throat> this one didn't really make the list because both men have been in some absolute stinkers in the past. Akoli obviously has a bit of a reputation for being in bad fights, which could be considered a little bit unfair. Um, I think they're both heading in the same direction, so a meeting is inevitable eventually. Um, but I guess it could be saved for a unification if possible at some point. 
I'm not sure if this is technically eligible under the rules of the fantasy fight camp that I set out before because I don't know if React Pool is actually officially promoted by Matchroom. Um, but I know he's managed by Dillian White, so I imagine it'll be easy to sort out anyway. Another one that just missed out on one of my favourites that I thought of is uh, Martin Joseph Ward against Joe Cordina. I think it's a great fight for the boxing purists in terms of it being two skilled operators in the ring together. Um, and I think it would be like a really fast-paced chess match. Um, they're both the same age and probably just off their peaks. I imagine Ward will be looking for a world title shot soon. Um, so this this fight would obviously not be great for him because it might be a bit risky. Cordine is a little bit behind because he took he took his amateur career a little bit further, but he shouldn't be too far off fighting for a world title either. Um, I just really like the the way that both of these guys box, and I think domestically it makes for an exciting, good quality matchup. Um, maybe even a bit of a hidden gem in the in the matchroom stable because I've not really heard people talk about this before. Um, I guess it's probably because they're not that high profile enough. Um, and that's probably why it didn't make into the five fight card for me. Um, and then just finally, uh, Callum Smith versus John Ryder too. I think this is main. The reason I've included this is mainly because I just think Ryder really deserves the rematch. Um, I th- whether you think he was robbed or not in the first fight, or even if you think Smith won, you can't deny that it was close enough for Ryder to deserve a rematch. And with the form that Smith was on, no one even gave Ryder a chance going into the fight. Um, and he some way managed to manoeuvre his way around Smith's huge height and reach advantage um, finding himself on the inside and he actually pinned Smith against the ropes on a num- number of occasions um, <clears throat> this doesn't make it on my five fight card because obviously I couldn't have Callum Smith twice and I can't really pick this over a world title unification um, but I do think it's a fight that needs to happen and sort of outside of the fantasy realm of what this has been I think this could be a good realistic option for Eddie Hearn's fight camp because even though it would probably draw a big crowd um, after the success of the first fight it's not one that that necessarily needs to be held in a big arena Um, so I think this could be a good headlining option for a um, fight camp card and it would be a way to keep both the fighters busy while getting some real excitement into the fans um, and getting them to want to watch boxing behind closed doors and if Smith's at the world class level that we think he is he should deal with Ryder this time and move on to a unification fight after lockdown Um, because there are some great ones out there in his division with, obviously, as I've mentioned, Billy Joe Saunders or even the Americans, Benavidez and Caleb Plant. Um, And it's not like, at the moment, Smith has anywhere else to go. Um, And, yeah, as I mentioned, it gives Ryder the rematch he deserves. So just to run through it one last time, my five-fight card would be, would start with um, Fowler Fitzgerald 2, then move on to Buatzi versus Johnson, then Brooke versus Khan, then the chief support of Billy Joe Saunders versus Callum Smith, and then a big heavyweight headliner of uh, Dillian White versus Anthony Joshua, the rematch. Um, which sounds like a pretty good card to me, and definitely worth a pay-per-view fee. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all for today. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We'll be back next week with another podcast. Um, if there's anything you'd like us to discuss, leave it in the comments. And if there's any fights that you think I missed or that you'd have on your Matchroom Fantasy Fight Camp card, leave them in the comments below. Um, As I've been saying every week, hopefully I'll be getting guests on soon when we're out of lockdown. Uh, But for now, go check out our website. We've got some good new articles coming soon, including an interview with British Featherweight and Tyson Fury's training partner Isaac Lowe. Um, Also, go follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Boxing Index and go give our Facebook page a like. I think we're almost at 500 likes now, so if you could go give us a push, that'd be great. Um, And once again, thanks for listening and we'll see you next week.